Well, if you feel like you steered clear of being taken advantage of of the Return to Nature funeral home in Colorado, it should be noted there's other places out there that do this same sort of thing. Maybe not stack the bodies the way they did because that really was just pretty gruesome uh, and crazy. Uh, But there's plenty of other places willing to take your money and give you some quick creed and tell you it's Aunt Edna. I don't think I've ever met anybody with an at Aunt Edna, and I like to use that one a lot. I don't think I've ever met anybody, anybody named Edna. Um, my family, I think we had an Edna. You had an Edna, an older yeah. person, I'm assuming. Oh heavens, yes. Uh, she's been gone for probably forty years. It's one of those things where before they had sonograms, you're like, well, it's going to be Ed or Edna, one of the two, and it's named after somebody. And uh, Ed was going to have it no other way. Not considering that maybe the woman doesn't want to be named after a man because you're putting an A at the end of the name. Um, Yeah, uh, a startling discovery uh, has uh, shaken another community. Jacksonville, Florida, this time, uh, serving a search warrant at an abandoned funeral home where they found three bodies inside the mortuary. A little bit better than the nearly 200 in Colorado. The disturbing revelation led to accusations against Marion Graham Mortuary's funeral director, Elliot Maurice Graham, who's 49, who is now facing charges of grand theft and improper preservation of a human body. A uh, startling discovery uh, there. The investigation unfolded when a complaint lodged the Florida's chief financial officer, Jimmy Patterson's office, which oversees funeral homes and mortuaries to ensure they uphold the highest standards of respect and dignity when handling the remains of the deceased. Is that like their slogan? <laughs> I, it must be. Upholding you know, the before highest Before we continue, standards. I've got a question. Have you ever been involved in planning a funeral? Uh, not technically. I've. It was basically my parents. Okay. Well... I have, and it's very expensive, Mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here reading this story, an abandoned funeral home. Mm -hmm. How do you F up a funeral home so badly that it's not a a viable business? I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about funeral homes, but it seems like it could be a cash cow. It's a huge cash cow, and I don't mean to, you know, talk poorly about that industry. I, I have respect for them. But the prices on caskets and and all kinds of things that go with it, um, you know, the the silk or satin <sighs> thing inside of it costs X amount of dollars. The, everything is a nickel and a dime. I mean, really? it's just extremely expensive. I didn't know. I thought like the inside stuff just kind of came with it. I don't know. I you, you can get upgrades. Oh, because it really matters when you're dead. Precisely. I, I think my grandmother's casket back in the eighties was like eight grand. No shit. Yes. Wow. So I, you can spend a fuck ton of money. So if you're not being financially productive as an owner of a funeral home, I don't know how things are now, mm-hmm. but they're not cheap. I mean, there's a reason Costco and Sam's Club <laughs> that you can get caskets cheaper because there's such markup on it. I have. I, I figured you're, you'd be able to make money because the product comes to you, which is the body of the person. And if you have the wherewithal, I guess, to handle bodies and do it in a respectful, correct way, you can probably make a lot of money at that. It would just be a really, I don't know, that's to be a dark profession. I mean, <laughs> considering mm-hmm. what we do, it's dark. But I'm not like, you know, handling bodies in my basement. I'm just talking about it. <laughs> Right, and you're not trying to put together bodies that have been shot up or yeah. you know in a car accident. I couldn't handle that. I, I I can barely stand it when I'm watching a made-for-TV movie, and there's like surgery on the screen. I have to like look the other way because I yeah, you're not cut out for this. It would not work for me. I suppose I could hire someone that could do it, but then I'd be a little bit kind of on edge all the time too. Of like, this is weird that this person is able to do this and they really want to do it that frequently. That that to me would be kind of a red flag on a human being. I'm sure there's lovely people that do it and are completely fine and normal. Yeah, I, I actually know a few uh, in the area that I live, mm-hmm. and and they're it's a different profession, and and they don't make any. You know, I was going to say they don't make any bones about it. I'm sorry, they uh. 
you know, they, they don't say that it's a weird profession, but they mm-hmm. understand. They know it is. They know sure. it's it takes a certain kind of person, but somebody has to do the job. So, yeah, I mean, it's not know. a weird, it's a normal profession. I mean, it's part of life that we have these mm-hmm. things. It's a unique profession, I guess, is Correct. what it would take the right to. But it's like, I, I was supposed, you know, if you're, it's the same type of people. I don't, maybe not the same type of people. I don't know. But if you're able to be a surgeon, you're able to handle mm-hmm. that sort of stuff fine. You could probably handle that sort of stuff fine, and I will. Easily. And I don't. I don't think weird about uh, surgeons or people in the medical world that are are operating and seeing that stuff on a daily basis. Like I don't know why it's different when it's a body. I think it'd be, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, in response, well, it's because yeah. we get creeped out by it. We, you know, no. we've been raised on horror stories, and the body sits up in the casket and attacks you, and yeah. you know, so we're we're we've been programmed to be afraid. Yeah, that's true. A, a show that uh, kind of puts it into an interesting perspective is Six Feet Under. It was on HBO in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s. Yes. And that was, uh, it was done well. It really kind of showed it in a, I think, more of a accurate light of what life is like in, in maybe, in, in a dramatic light. But uh, but it didn't necessarily try to go to a spooky a- area to it. Although the show did have its fair share of just kind of creepiness to it. My favorite mm-hmm. was when... Uh, uh, Rain Wilson well, this is prior to the office he actually played one of the morticians on there for about a season uh, he was Dwight on the office but he's uh, right. he was a mortician on there for a season if you want to see that character or Rain Wilson in a very unique role uh, that is uh, worth going back and watching uh, oh, that's a good one six feet under yeah. I haven't thought about that in a long time in response to the distressing situation uh, Patronus emphasized the importance of holding Graham accountable. We're going to do everything possible to put this guy behind bars for a very long time. Nothing is more important than family and our loved ones or, and as our loved ones pass away. It's always a difficult situation and families are entrusting funeral directors to treat their loved ones with respect and dignity. These allegations indicate that this alleged criminal did the opposite. The uh, alleged misconduct includes The provision of fake ashes to grieving families, you know, uh, one family in particular expressed their shock and disappointment when they received what were supposed to be ashes of their beloved grandmother. However, upon closer inspection, they discovered that they had received, but they received bore no resemblance to human ashes. I was going to say, bore no resemblance to grandma. (laughs) Like at their ashes, they don't usually do Right, yeah, Uh, it's not supposed to. uh, Pauline Durden, whose family was affected by the deception, passed away six months ago. Her granddaughter, uh, uh, Junesha Kemp, shared her dismay, stating, they look more like chalk or ground kitty litter to me. (laughs) Kemp also revealed that Graham had been unprofessional in their interactions, often giving them the runaround. However, Kemp expressed relief that Graham's arrest, stating, it gave us a little bit of closure, knowing that we now have my grandma, the person who did this horrendous act, is now behind bars in the process is give it, getting moved and we can finally let it go and let her rest in peace. Uh, it's, of course, raised concerns about the entire funeral industry's integrity and accountability, this and many other cases. Uh, they've emphasized that the investigation is ongoing and any other death services professionals involved in could face the revo- revocation of their license or uh, criminal charges. The funeral home we're talking about here uh, has been a fixture in Jacksonville since 1984. With Elliot Graham taking over from his father, Marion Graham, upon his passing in 2018, and then obviously finding a way to screw that all up and destroy the family business. Where's Where's Dad? That's I mean, yeah. Dad's dead. Dad's did, dead. What happened to Dad, did. though? Yeah. Yeah. He, the The thing that should be noted, that I thought, was kind of inaccurate, and that was, you know, the person going, "Here's, uh, sorry, that's what ashes look like of people. They 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 don't look like you had a campfire mm-hmm. out back." Um, they do kind of resemble kitty litter and quick crete, and, and that's why places like this are able to pass them off as such, because that's what they look like. Um, that's just, it is what it is. Uh, maybe they had their mixture a little bit off in terms of what they gave, and maybe it looked more like, maybe they got like the, uh, the, 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 the kitty litter <laughs> crystals that are <laughs> like the translucent, uh, super absorbent ones and they smell like Febreze. That may be the dead giveaway, literally, that that's not grandma, but it is super absorbent. Want to listen ad-free? 
Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.